Okay, so the vertebral column is essentially composed of five different curvature areas. Um, we call these areas, um, starting from top to bottom, the cervical, the thoracic, the lumbar, the sacral, and the coccyx area. And as you can see, there are many differences within the bones in those regions. And now we will go specifically through each region and show um, similarities as well as differences that exist. So, the first region, cervical region, um, contains the first bone in the vertebral column. That bone is the atlas, which sits directly on top of the axis. As you can see, it's fairly small. It has um, two inferior articular facets, which are directly in front, and you can also tell that it belongs to the cervical curvature area because of the transverse processes that stick out and the transverse foramens that um, exist, which are the holes inside the processes. The top area is the posterior tubercle, and as you can guess, the bottom is the anterior. And here is the facet inside for the dens, which it sits directly on top of. This allows for your neck to move from side to side. Now, moving directly below that, we see the axis. The axis is a little bit different. It has dens, which stick directly out, as you can tell, and that is where the atlas sits on top of. There are also superior articular facets on each side, the smooth ends and you have the lamina which is going around the circumference right here on each side and the spinous process which we did not see in the previous bone exists right on back side and that curves down a little bit you can also see if you flip it around the inferior articular processes which are right here and that connects directly to the bones below it. Now moving on to the thoracic curvature region, here we see an example of one of the bones. Now you can tell this belongs in the thoracic region because A, the body, which is right here, is a little bit larger than the previous two we saw. And the spinous process sticks directly out and is very sharp, as you can see. Um, the body is heart-shaped in a way, and the opening in the middle, which is the vertebral foramen, is a little bit smaller compared to everything else. So, compared to the last one, similarities are transverse processes, you have the spinous process, the body, the vertebral foramen, and if you look right here, you can also see the inferior and superior facets on the back and the front. Now moving down, directly below that, we see the lumbar region, which contains some bones that have a bigger body, as you can tell, yet they have a smaller vertebral foramen. And if you hold it this way, you can see the superior articular processes which connect to the bones um, directly above it, and here are the inferior processes. Now as you can tell, the spinous process is a lot shorter and it is more blunt than the previous ones we have seen. The body is bigger to support more weight and the vertebral foramen is smaller. You can also see um, the lamina circumference going around. 
Now, I don't have um, the, the sacral region and the coccyx right below it, but you can definitely tell differences due to the holes in the odd irregular shape of the sacrum. And that is directly attached to the coccyx bone. So once again, here are the different regions in their entirety.